Hey everyone, Saturn Dave here, and I'm doing a complete playthrough of the just released Stellar Assault SS English localization from the Stellar Assault team, or previously the Bulk Slash team. Uh, they've done an amazing job, as we all expected. Just spared no expense, put a ton, poured a ton of uh, heart and soul into this, and you'll see for yourself. I'm gonna let the audio play out here. Four years have passed since first contact. Earth, the third planet, fell under siege to an alien fleet the likes of which we'd never seen. The situation seemed dire, but to our surprise, the enemy were easily repelled, withdrawing at the first show of resistance and vanishing as swiftly as they'd appeared. Their technology had simply been no match for that of mankind. Considering the minimal damage done, there was perhaps a silver lining to the incident. The attack had unified us, bringing an end to eons of conflict over ethnic and religious divides. Afterward, we studied what we could from the wreckage of enemy ships, but there was precious little to be learned. The vessels had been outfitted with self-bricking mechanisms, making them all but impossible to examine. Then, Two years later, there was a second contact. The identity of the alien menace remained a mystery, but this time, we were ready for them. Knowing another encounter was all but inevitable, we'd work together as one human race to make preparations to intercept an attack. Having only incurred minor damage in the previous clash, we'd assumed the enemy would be even easier to repel this time but the alien invaders had another surprise for us. Their once outdated technology had evolved immensely in two years' time. It was now nearly on par with our own. Had we not undergone a technological revolution over those two years, they might have wiped us out then and there. Then, as the battle descended into chaos, the enemy vanished yet again. This time, however, we were able to track them. They had performed a series of space-time jumps, consolidating their forces at the edge of our solar system. Then, with a mysterious blast, disappeared altogether. Some theorized they'd recognized their imminent defeat and self-destructed. But ultimately, we determined it safest to assume they'd escaped, leaving open the possibility of a future encounter. Another two years passed, and now they've made contact for a third time. This time, certain facets of their technology have surpassed ours. This comes in spite of humanity's strengthened coordination and further technological advances since the last contact. We no longer have the assurance we once did only questions. Why do they attack at two-year intervals? Where did they come from? And who, or what, are they? UN Space Force. That was an awesome intro. Uh, so, everything, uh, I'm so excited to play this all the way through here. And this will be the first time that I'm playing through the whole thing in English. I've had access to earlier builds, but, uh, but yeah, so, um, the sound design, you know, uh, of this game, the, the music was already, was already great and everything like that. The sound design, Shadow Mask did an amazing job mixing everything down, um, and, uh, just all of the voice work that you're gonna hear is, uh, I think, really amazing. I know there's probably some naysayers who are like, oh, I would just rather have, a uh, you know, they would just rather have like a sub version, but personally, I, I really like the dub. Um, so there's a trace function uh, for going back and playing levels that we've done before. I'm just going to play from the beginning and go straight through. Um, you got difficulty, you got sound. I have everything set up for uh, for the uh, voices to come through loud and clear. Uh, screen, adjust position. Uh, you can change the color of the the outline, the border, you know, control settings, and then uh, let's see here. 
I also got x-axis I have it inverted that's just the way that I like it uh, kind of from playing Star Fox back in the day but we'll go ahead and get started here with our first briefing um, I, I so you you get a choice between the heavy craft and then the like featherweight or fe I don't know the light uh, the lighter craft I, I the, the heavier one can obviously take more damage but it's not as maneuverable I mean, I think it uh, I think I kind of like the the lightweight one so I'm just gonna go with that one um, yeah, if I do like another subsequent playthrough, I'll probably... The United Nations Space Force is Earth's first line of defense against alien invasion. We've concentrated our ranks along the orbital path of the eighth planet, Neptune. This was a predictive measure based on the enemy's previous appearances near Neptune's neighboring planets, Uranus, then Pluto. Unfortunately, with this third contact, the enemy have instead emerged slightly inward of the orbital path of the third planet from the Sun, Earth. They've since dispersed into multiple squadrons and spread across the inner solar system. To make matters worse, they've quickly managed to establish a position within attack range of the Earth and have begun pelting our home planet with asteroids. The UNSF are heading back as quickly as possible, but at this rate, the Earth will incur catastrophic damage before they ever arrive. Oops. That's no good. And so the duty falls to us. We've assembled each nation's best and brightest at Earth Moon One and begun preparations for a joint space command. So it says each nation, and I like the fact that they got folks with different accents to the do the voices. The enemy is using an Excel gate to pelt the Earth with asteroids. The damage is extensive. A few more of these strikes and the environmental destruction alone will be catastrophic. Our hope is therefore to neutralize their base of operations quickly, but we don't have the intel we need. We need to dispatch a reconnaissance craft, but with the Space Command still in its preparatory stages, none have yet been deployed to our ranks. Instead, we'll conduct this recon operation using our support craft. All Feather 1 spacecraft are equipped with auxiliary mobile support pods. These are the most recon-capable vessels in our command. But as the name says, they were designed for support and are thus unmanned and unarmed. Their partner Feather 1 crafts will therefore accompany them on this mission. After the jump, all units will advance to the navigational point and conduct a scan. You are to undock from your support craft during this scan to ensure optimal response time, should any emergency arise. Once scanning is complete, redock with your support craft and withdraw. Best of luck. Well, here we go. Get right into it. I'm going to try not to die this whole time. I've... I've practiced a bit, so I think I'm going to err on the side of caution. This intro sequence never gets old. Like the jump to light speed and everything. This is Hog 1. Right. Birdie, radio check. Loud and clear, sir. This marks the first field up of the illustrious Joint Space Command. Let's move out. Mission area coordinates confirmed. Initiating jump. All scan points will be displayed on your HUD. Just follow the screen. Approaching mission area. Disengaging jump drive. All units, fan out. Let's be home in time for dinner. Please align your targeting reticle with the green marker. All units have reached the scanning point. Very good. Undock your support craft and start scanning. Undocking Kite 3. Stand by on heightened alert. Kite 3. Initiating scan.
All support craft have finished conducting their scan, sir. All right, let's dock them and roll back. Picking up increased kinetic activity at the enemy site. Well, guess they finally noticed. Thermal reading spiking. They're attacking. Oops. Kite 3 damaged. All channels offline. Yikes. Detecting jump turbulence. No ID signals. Multiple level okay. craft exiting jump. All units, intercept at your own discretion. Yes. Time to step it up. that I guess detecting a large kinetic reading within enemy lines it's an asteroid the enemy ejected an asteroid at us through the Excel gate damn it Hawk one to Garuda we've got your enemy data but as you can see we've got big trouble what's the plan this is Garuda threat confirmed Hawk Featherwing use your support craft to recharge and pursue the asteroid while awaiting further instruction Roger that Garuda Birdie, use my support pod to recharge. Man, should have known they wouldn't let us ease into this gig. This gig, I like that. I love the, uh, I just love the script, you know, the word choice. The asteroid launched through the enemy's Excel gate is 300 meters in diameter. If it continues to plunge toward the Earth, the damage will be immeasurable. We are now loading Falcon 1 with a resonant frequency round. Once it's ready, we, along with Eagle Featherwing, will head to your position. Meanwhile, take note of the vernier thrusters attached to the asteroid for course correction. Destroy them before we arrive. Over and out. Loud and clear. So this asteroid has like thrusters on it that you have to destroy, but you have to get in front of it. But not hit it, so that's kind of Getting difficult. in front of this thing will be a royal pain. Yeah, it will. Birdie, you handle the front. Me and Bride will take care of the rear. Really, Captain? You're gonna make him do your dirty work just because you don't feel like it? Quiet. Captain's orders are Captain's orders. Ugh. I gotta get way ahead of it. Hit it. <laughs> Did not want to do that, but uh, yeah, this is the okay, so it's on the other side. I 
Trace hunt turbulence detected. There we go. Oh, is that who I think it is? Failed to confirm ID signal. It is the enemy. Crap. Okay. All units return fire. Don't die. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll try not to. Space time turbulence detected. ID signal confirmed. I'm so glad they could find the time! Howdy, McPherson! Guess we kept you on ice. Is that Alan Virgil I hear? Ha! <laughs> You're lucky I left you some scraps. Heads up, I'm carrying a heavy payload here. I need you to cover me. Roger that, dead, buddy. Right, 30. Eyes on thousand one. Eagle one to Falcon one. We've suppressed the enemy vessels. Roger. Launching resonator shot. All units get away from the target. Impact imminent. Mm. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh, this is a fun part. Falcon one to all units. The asteroid is smashed, but its fragments are still too large. Break formation and fire at will to demolish what's left. Okay. Over. Here he goes. There are no remaining fragments capable of reaching the Earth's atmosphere. Falcon 1 to all units. Mission complete. All units return to base. I gotta throw back to Star Fox. A lot of these scenes are like... feel like throwbacks to Star Fox, which is a good thing. I love, I love Star Fox, but... Gotta love the way that the graphics are rendered in this game. All right, next mission. The data you scanned with your support pods has provided us with detailed intel on the enemy's asteroid launch site. Hawk and Eagle squadrons will carry out an attack on this site. It is imperative that we halt these asteroid strikes. We have just one target, the enemy Excel gate. Eagle Squadron will focus on destroying this target. Hawk Squadron, attack the battleships around the gate to dispel the enemy forces. Good luck.
Hawk 1 to all Hawk units. We're off. Mission area coordinates confirmed. Time to jump. Time to jump. I love the the jump to hyperspeed. Hey, Birdie. How's that fancy new AI module working for you? Even your support craft talks now. That's right, Captain. Call me Maria. I'm Kite 3's AI module. They've even test outfitted me with an experimental emotion chip. I have my own feelings and personality. Let's be pals. Greetings, Captain McPherson. This is Edgar, Hawk 3's AI unit. I'm an Edgar Coinciding fan. Coinciding with Maria's arrival, I too have been test outfitted with an experimental emotion chip. Mine, however, has been configured to sound less comical. C comical? Robbie, tell this tin can not to be so rude. <laughs> Sounds like you got a full house there, Robbie. <laughs> Captain, save the dumb jokes for later. We're coming up on the mission area. Whoops. Sounds like those two aren't the only ones with emotion chips. Captain. All right, all right. All Hawk Squadron units. Break formation as soon as we exit the jump. Attack any enemy ships surrounding the gate. All right. Arriving at the mission area. Get Let's ready to go. Jump out. Hmm. Take care of that gate, Virgil. Right, on it. Good luck. Kind of got knocked off course. to focus on the gate here but these other dudes are these ships are giving me trouble I'll swing back around I don't normally 
play like this, but um, with this game, I find that trying to... I would have been better off if I had like an arcade stick or something like that. Maybe the mission stick would, would be better. Well, I don't have a mission stick to really test this out on right now, so... Come on. Get those hits on him. There we go. Bad guys are escaping! Eagle 1 to Garuda. I've destroyed the target. Remaining enemy units are retreating. Mission complete. This is Garuda. Solid copy. Eagle Squadron and Hawk Plume Wing, return at once. Hawk Feather Wing, we've got word on your next mission. Okay. No time to dilly dally, folks. Right, Birdie? You heard her. Dock with your support craft. That level always takes a little longer than the others just because I can never tell if I'm putting the right kind of damage on that craft or not. Take a look at this asteroid belt between the orbital paths of Earth and Venus. Here we've discovered the supply site the enemy has been using to scavenge asteroids. They equip these asteroids with booster rockets, then guide them to the Excel gate. They've left a number of these boosters intact at the site, meaning there's still a threat of ongoing asteroid strikes, albeit at reduced efficiency. Your objective is to neutralize this supply point and completely cut off any potential for further strikes. Hawk Plume Wing have resupplied and are standing by for jump. Please regroup before commencing the mission. Best of luck. What do you think of the voiceovers? I think they're pretty good so far. Hawk Feather Wing, all units stand by for jump. Mission area coordinates confirmed. Ready when you are. All right. Ready on our end, Garuda. Just say when. Roger. I'll send the signal. Everything is very... The the, the mix down is really good. And there's a lot of... Hawk Plume uh, Wing, reporting that? in. All right. As soon as we jump out, all units focus on sweeping up the enemy. Time to put a dent in their plans. Roger. Roger. Let's go! Maria, please take heed. Your vessel is unarmed. Entering the combat area would be highly dangerous. I suggest you refrain. I know that. Jeez. Can't you take a joke? Hmm. I am, as of yet, unable to comprehend humor. Maria, I would like you to teach me. Humor is not something you teach. It's gonna oh, come back to bite it. the mission area! Up and at him. I don't want to see any cold feet. Try not to die. Try not to die. I love that line. All right, now we really have to be careful to avoid those. I put as much damage on him without, uh...
Whoa, sometimes you can't see the crap when the uh when it's silhouetted or something like that. Oh, okay, come on. Not too take too much shield damage there. Come on. No further enemy readings detected. I believe all craft have been destroyed. Do you concur, Maria? No bad guys here. They've been completely annihilated. What a bunch of amateurs. Space-time turbulence detected. Failed to confirm ID signal. Holy crap, it's the bad guys. Oh, we got a new batch. Garuda to all units. Hawk Squadron's mean energy level just dropped below 50%. It is too dangerous to remain in combat. Please withdraw at once. Aw, oh, man. Where'd you guys learn how to fight? Well, them's the brakes. All units, back to base, on the double. Roger. Roger. Okay. I can still go. Listen to the drums. Kind of like they're tripping over themselves. That's the funniest thing. The the MIDI for the drums, it's like they're can't keep up with them. We've uncovered the enemy's frontline base of attack, located to the rear of the previous mission area. Now that they've lost the ability to carry out asteroid strikes, they'll likely use this base to launch a new attack on us. We will therefore make the first move. Our mission is to launch an all-out attack on the enemy's frontline base and eliminate the standing threat to Earth. The installation is built into the crevasse of a large asteroid, with numerous battleships deployed in the asteroid's perimeter. After arriving at the mission area, all squadrons will first launch an attack on these ships to thin out their ranks. Then. Hawk Squadron will infiltrate the asteroid by way of a short jump and neutralize the frontline base. Best of luck. You're gonna need it. Oh, the whole gang is here. Time to shut down the enemy's frontline base. Let's head out. Initiating jump. Sending us out there alone just because we got the right ships. It doesn't pay to be nice, does it? Now ah, stop whining. Our ships are too big for this one. The least you could do is send us some of your men. Keep them coming, Captain. Jokes are great today. We're at the mission area.
first take out those enemy ships. All units, break and attack. You show them! Kind of have to avoid the plasma or whatever that is. And kind of pivot to a different uh, target. Okay. Come on, wreck him. Okay, something hit me. I wasn't expecting that. I'm going for this one that's far away. there. Come on. Blast him out of the sky. to Garuda. Just sunk our last battleship. Roger. Hawk Squadron, please proceed to breach point. Eagle and Falcon Squadrons, continue attacking all enemy craft and keep their forces dispersed. Hell yeah! Don't wait up if you're ready to head in. 
Virgil, Phil, we'll leave the clean up to you guys. Oh no, I want to clean up. Oh, no fair. Oh my god. Woo! <laughs> Guess this would be too tight with their ships. I verified the enemy's front line base ahead. Please mind the gun turrets. Hawk Squadron, all units engage. The enemy is processing the asteroid's mineral components into energy and storing it within the central tower. Got it. All units, oh, attack come that on. tower. Whoa. Yeah, that's not good. I usually save. I'm, I'm usually able to save more of my shield. That's not good. Come on. Come on. Good lord. There's a lot of... I'm taking a lot of fire there. Come on. Blow up. I can't Okay, gotta get in control here Oh god This was easier before This was a lot easier before I don't know why it's so hard now and if I hit anything it's not going to go well. Come on. I've got 5% shield left. I can't take any more hits. percent shields come on just die already for goodness fucking sake die there it is come on three percent come on die you detecting a series of strong readings originating oh. from the center of the tower you gotta be it's dangerous <laughs> Everybody out! Short jumps! <laughs> okay. That was crazy, because last time, that was so simple. I was able to take it out so easily last time. This time I was just like holding on for control. So, uh, my heart was racing a little bit there. At least it kept things interesting. And I've got like carpal tunnel. The enemy now. has established their position along the interplanetary system, but for some reason they won't perform space jumps. Instead, they're advancing toward the center of the solar system at a gradual pace. A long distance scan has revealed that as the enemy traveled past Venus, a splinter fleet touched down on the moon. In recognition of our successful attack on the enemy's asteroid launch site and frontline base, the Joint Space Command have been dispatched to investigate. 
where no one to boldly go <laughs> from the from behind that looked like the Enterprise. We just received an SOS transmission from a manned solar probe. It came under enemy fire near Venus during its return flight to Earth. Head to its position and effect an immediate rescue. Since Venus is also our destination, please hold position at the mission area once you've completed this objective. Best of luck. I think this one pretty simple. Uh, it's like simple followed by hard or f followed by difficult, uh, but we'll see. Those research probes are unarmed. Let's underlay. Mission area confirmed. Let's jump. Sounds like it's just a few fighters. He's a cake. Maria, dear, we shouldn't let our guard down. Yeah, like, whoop, arriving at the mission area. This is Solar Probe Umbrella. Our shields are nearly sapped. Please send help. Ah! Oh, oh. Not good. Move it. You think? Thank you so much. I thought I was a goner. Yeah, yeah, don't even mention it. All right, all units, stay in the mission area and stand by. Hawk Featherwing, dock with your support craft. There's a janky percussion. <laughs> They were a little tougher this time, don't you think, Captain? Or were they? I can't say I noticed. Just goes to show what an accomplished space ace you are, Captain. They were not tough. <laughs> Guess, Guess you don't, you don't have gotta to be, be human, human to kiss ass, ass like, like one. one. <laughs> I love that. Well, I won't complain. Turbulence detected. No ID signal. Something's jumping out. Dead ahead. <laughs> I love this Bastards. scream. Bertie, you take care of Bright. Oh no! Brenda is caught in Venus's gravity well. This part is hard. Like, there aren't any. According any to Hawk 2's AI unit, Ensign Bright has lost consciousness. Moreover, the ship's control system has sustained damage and is only barely maintaining stability. This is bad! She's dropping too steep for a safe entry! Judging by Hawk 2's angle of entry and remaining shield energy, the ship won't withstand 10 seconds of atmospheric friction. Oh, we're out of time! What do we do? There is one option, Maria. I'm sending something over now, for your consideration. Huh? Edgar, I thought you didn't do jokes! It is our only option. 
You're right. It's this or else. Analyzing all possibilities, we have determined but one course of action that can rescue Ensign Bright. Moreover, it will entail serious risk. The neat thing about the Featherwing support craft is that it comes outfitted with an amplifier, which allows the ship to deploy its assault field even when docked. You see, with this amplifier, you can expand the field's coverage so it protects both the ship and the support craft. And when the field is in this expanded state, it creates a slight trail. Naturally, any matter within this trail is protected alongside it. Clock 2 has no real way of staying in this one spot right now. See where this is going? So I have to now do then, it. Now then, I'll explain the plan. First, we'll approach Hawk 2 from the rear. We'll then release Maria and have her redock there. From there, I'll use Hawk 2's field generator to cast its assault field. Okay, Robbie? You and Eddie do whatever you can to stay inside that trail. I shall dedicate most of my processing power to synchronizing our drop speed. We ask that you steer the ship to keep it solely within this margin. Good luck, everyone. <laughs> now I just gotta do it. So, it's like a balancing act, keep it, keeping it right in the middle. Nearing port two. Perfect interception. Distance to Ensign Bright, two meters. Undocking Maria. The ship's temperature is rising. You must hurry. I know. <sighs> Deploying assault field. Ensign Birdie, keep her steady. Okay, see? Than it than it was. It used to be really hard. I think I got a handle on it now, but still rubbing up against. You gotta hold it here for a while too. Autopilot. There we go. Cool little plot device, though. Kind of shakes things up. Keeps it interesting. I never would have known what I was supposed to do there, like when I was playing the Japanese version. Like, I kind of figured out that I needed to keep it in the middle there. But, like, the context, all of that dialogue and everything like that kind of lets you in on what's actually going on. Brittany, you okay? Aw, thanks, Maria. My neck is a bit sore. That concerns me. You may have a cervical spine injury. Thank you, Edgar, but I don't think you need to worry. And Rob, I don't know what to say. Oh, don't worry about him. What kind of man would he be if he gave up on you? Mm-hmm. That's right, Maria. All in a day's work. Captain? Hey, Birdie, way to make the rest of us look bad. Hey, it, wait, Captain, wh what are you? I was worried, so I came to check on you guys. But your Feather One can't generate enough force to get off this planet. Now you're stuck here, too. Not to worry. They finished terraforming this planet about a year ago, and now they're colonizing it. Do you know why? Hmm, I seem to remember they were trying to mine minerals. Exactly. As luck would have it, they've got a mass driver set up on the equator. I guess for the sake of transporting resources as efficiently as possible. Here, check the data. 
I see. This could launch us clear of the planet's atmosphere. That's great. I had no idea. Well, don't break out the champagne just yet. Huh? Before I descended, two big unidentified objects were launched off the moon towards the colony. I doubt they were housewarming gifts. Meaning, if the mass driver is attacked and rendered non-operational, we won't be able to leave this planet after all. Exactly right. If we let them destroy that mass driver, we'll be stuck sitting house for a long time. Not good! We have multiple bogeys incoming! Gotta hand it to them. They work fast. Maria, you take Bright and escape to the colony ASAP. Birdie, you and I get to play cleanup crew. Alrighty. Catch you on the flip side. Captain. Rob. Please take care. next to me. Get to that mass driver on the double. Captain, that combat encounter consumed much of this vessel's energy supply. I would like to restock with Kite 1, if I may. I've got tons you know, of energy. I'm glad you're all getting so much use out of my support craft. It's like still struggling to keep up. I have downloaded new information on the unidentified objects from Garuda. I shall summarize this intel along with the data we obtained through Kite 1's long distance scan. Two objects were launched from the moon's surface. They are now anchored in the ocean, approximately 30 kilometers from the mass driver. These are likely enemy assault divers. We believe it's only a matter of time before they commence an attack on the colony and mass driver. We've got to make do on our own. This could turn ugly quick. Targets confirmed. There they are, clear as day. Whoa, are they sticking out of the ocean? So it would seem, they extend to the ocean floor. We're gonna need some big tweezers to plug those things. Confirming numerous flying objects in the vicinity of the enemy vessels. They appear to be releasing boarded aircraft. All right, places everyone.
That's one down. Something is odd. Ah, oh, what now? The other vessel has followed suit. It's one of my favorite parts. <laughs> Head for the best the driver. Chase him down. Let's do it. I guess you were chasing them until like dusk, like that, because now it's like sundown. Time to reach the mass driver is approximately 5 minutes 33 seconds. And how do we stop them? We would do well to impair their propulsion. Oh, the engines! Birdie! Aim for the engines and blow them sky high! Yes, sir. Over and out. One hell of a rush. Everybody awake now? It would seem we won't be stranded after all. Yep, you said it. All right, everybody. Nose is up. It's hard keeping my cool this close to the surface. I have detected zero cool in your care, Captain. Shut up. The solar probe has aided us in conducting a detailed scan of Venus's moon, revealing an enemy base. This one is larger than its frontline base and appears to have some sort of enormous structure at its center. We believe it is a staging site for an attack against Earth. We must neutralize this base, for Earth's sake, as well as to protect the Venus colony. Therefore, we will launch an assault with every fighter aboard this carrier. The enemy base is built in a radial structure on the moon's surface, with several battleships positioned around it. As with the frontline base, it appears to be converting the moon's mineral components into energy, which it is amassing in a central tower. If we approach from above, we risk coming under concentrated fire from those battleships. Therefore, please make your descent at a distance, stay low to the ground, infiltrate and attack. Best of luck. And as I discovered, you gotta stay away from the tower while you're trying to attack the ships, because you'll get that plasma fire, um, which takes out a lot of your shields, and then you need to go in to the core, and not a, not a good time to have low shields, so this one is gonna be interesting. We'll see. Got sweaty palms. <laughs> Hawk squadrons all set. 
Eagle One, Falcon One. How's it looking on your end? Good to go. No issues here. Well, shall we then? Mission area coordinates confirmed. Initiating jump. And once again, they expect Space Command to take down a whole base. Same song, new day. What's holding up the fleet? They should be pretty close by now. We're at the mission area. Jump out! Here goes. Stay close to the ground. Enemy base confirmed. Straight ahead. Well, might as well stop by since we're in the neighborhood. Hawk Squadron, full speed ahead. Let's start with those battleships. There's about a gazillion of those gun turrets centered around the base. Be careful. See, I lost some shield there. That was not good. That was needless. Alright, see, and you want to keep as much shield as you can in these later missions. Alright, come on. The central tower has opened fire. All right, all units, focus on the tower. All right, here he goes. There's these little support columns that you gotta get. And you gotta try to avoid getting hit at the same time by that pink plasma fire. And I just, uh... oh, and there's a bunch of slowdown you have to contend with here too. So that's fun. Yikes. The tower has begun to leave. 
It is dangerous. Timber! Are you kidding? Ah! There's a hole where the tower was standing. Jeez, get a load of this reading. Is that the enemy's energy supply? Well, I have less, so uh, that's their I have game. less shield than They're stockpiling it underground. All right, bright, birdie. We're going in. McPherson, we need to perform a more thorough scan first. Oh, what's the harm? If it feels wrong, we'll pull back. That's why we have assault fields on these babies. Behind us, watch it, Birdie. This ain't good. The entry point has been sealed off by a bulkhead. The underground energy radiation also prevents us from reversing our vector. <laughs> it is impossible to turn around at this location. Let us proceed forward right, for now. See. There is a large open space ahead. Obstruction incoming. Please reduce your speed. I detect a high concentration of energy here. It would appear this is where the conversion takes place. Destroy the energy converter support struts. I will place markers on the display. All other locations have reinforced armor and are not susceptible to attack. Please evacuate. The bulkhead remains sealed. We have no choice. We must trust our assault field. Please maintain top speed. I am. Bulkhead destroyed. We made it. Nice. Birdie, you okay? Captain, please order all units to withdraw. It is dangerous. We know that. Me and Captain are the only ones still here. Edgar, let's get the hell out of here. Understood. Initiating jump drive. Yeah, so I failed that the la on my last playthrough like multiple times because I didn't realize that I needed to double tap to punch it as fast as I could go. Apparently, if you're going too slow, objects can, objects can enter your force field, right? So it's like... Ha Having taken the enemy's staging outpost, we, the Joint Space Command, have left Venus in our wake and just arrived at the verdant first planet in our solar system, Mercury. We are now restocking on supplies and fuel from a container ship in preparation for the decisive battle that awaits once we've regrouped with the UNSF, whose arrival is also imminent. It's the perfect time for something to go wrong. I don't like the sound of that. It's an enemy ambush. Garuda is currently docked to a container ship. The ship is still carrying a large volume of fuel, putting us at extreme risk. However, we cannot abandon it while it is unarmed. Hawk and Eagle squadrons, deploy all units at once. Intercept the enemy at all costs. Okay. We have our mission. Pretty straightforward.
Garuda to all units. We are currently evacuating all passengers off the container ship onto ours. Once complete, the container ship will vacate the area via autopilot. Until then, guard that ship at all costs. The container ship is well armored, but were it to explode, the Garuda could itself sustain critical damage. Well, I hope that I'm up to the task here. Yo, Birdie! Glad you could join us. Yeah, me Listen, too. Listen, things will get ugly if we don't clear the area ASAP. Hop to it! I'll be here looking after Garuda. Break a leg, Robbie! Maria, no word of encouragement for me. Break a circuit, Eddie! What break can I break, circuit. Maria? Another leg? What about me? What am I, a parrot? Can it! Okay, yeah, I didn't, uh, damn it. <laughs> I'm doing the damage. Do it, okay. Huh. Gotta watch out for those. You're coming right up on it and... It's destroyed. The container ship appears unharmed. Whew! They had me sweating bullets. They've learned a thing or two about when to launch an attack. <laughs> I thought we were done for! Hey now, where's your faith in the team? Didn't you trust us? You just said you were sweating bullets! Oh, right. Garuda to all units. The UNSF's arrival is imminent. Mind the aftershock as they jump out. Finally, time to settle the score. Right. That was sloppy on my part. But I'm alive, so... <laughs> All right. The enemy has arrived in the vicinity of the sun, but remains at a standstill, at least for now. Central Command has chosen to seize the opportunity and launch a coordinated attack with the entirety of our military force. Enemy forces are grouped in a hollow, spherical formation. We will send squadrons consisting of a few ships each to simultaneously attack their low density points. All fighters take point and destroy the enemy ships so our allied fleet can proceed ahead. Any interfering enemy ships will be marked as targets on your HUD. Best of luck.
All Hawk Squadron units assemble. Captain Virgil, Captain Feel, let's do this. All right. Ready to go? Guess we'll be face to face with the enemy once we jump out, huh? <laughs> oh, man. What, are you scared? <laughs> Sounds like someone's going soft. Stick it! After four Stick years it. of your BS, I can hardly remember life without it, Jake. What's that supposed to mean? Am I so bad? Uh, yeah. Oh, shucks. Now arriving at the mission area. High heat signatures. It's an enemy attack. Oh, man. Oh, tell me they're kidding. All units, full speed ahead. Let's make them rue the day. We'll make them rue. fight gonna take. Alright. And now we got these two to look at. I'm hoping we can put a big dent in them really quickly.
this is not easy. It's just very time consuming and you gotta try to keep your shields up. And there's so many of these ships. Damn. So many of these ships. Slow is not a good idea for my shields. I don't really know. Seems like I can dodge these things better when I don't go slow. But then I don't get enough time to really get a lot of hits on them. Yeah, see? When you kind of just sit here with your brakes on, you can get a lot more hits. But you risk your shields like a lot. Okay, yep, that was not good. Good grief. state-of-the-art ultra-speed assault craft. It possesses three times your ability. Aha! Uh -huh. And I'm dodging three times the lasers, how? Come on. hits on it there. Okay. <clears throat> this part kind of drags on.
route it to all Hawk Squadron units. UNSF scouts have discovered the location of an enemy carrier ship. We need to route it and put a stop to any enemy reinforcements. Hawk Featherwing, redock with your support craft and proceed directly to the target. Hawk Plume Wing, return to base and await new provisions. Roger that. Ensign Come Bright, on. Ensign Birdie, dock up. I almost had that guy. We were only able to scan the exterior of the enemy carrier. We take it they have special jamming measures in place. That is all the intel I'm able to provide. Forgive me, but you'll have to make do. Best of luck. My hand is like a claw <laughs> from, from holding the controller so tightly. Have you verified the mission area? Sure have. Initiating jump. The thing in the middle, right? Got it. There's something different about that ship. The armor plating on this enemy carrier appears much stronger than that of the other battleships. Oh, great. But it still seems to have its weak spots. <laughs> they just had to make it complicated. The other ones are, like, really difficult. So, yeah, let's see here. The thing in the middle, they say. As its weak spots, or so they say. Turbulence detected. ID signal confirmed. It's Hawk Boom. Well, let's just. Sorry, see we're late. Here. Connecting now. Glad to have you with us. Well, I'm getting hits on that. Gotta keep that shield up. Because there's just no mercy. Yeah, they come right at you with those. Oh my god. And they take your shield down so quickly. These plasma shots. Take your shield down so quickly. There looks to be some kind of power reactor inside this carrier. There's the Achilles heel. Alas, it is guarded by a strong barrier. From my observations, this barrier seems to resemble our own soap field. We've got to find a way to break through. Well, wait, what happened there? All right, I don't know how I'm supposed to break through that.
All right, hold on a second. Okay, hold on a second. Whoa, okay, all right. How do I... Oh, okay, that's how you... Ooh, okay. Yikes. Uh, okay. I think I need to fly through it with my shield up, but to do that... Oh, okay. There we go. Woo! Nicely done, Birdie. Hawk one to Garuda. And my Benson shields Birdie are going there and deep six that target. This is Garuda. Understood. Draw back as soon as you can. Roger that. Hawk squadron. All units return. Hold on. Something's off here. Huh? Oh god, no, I only have 11. Oh no. Intense heat source detected within the Allied fleet. Okay. UNSF cruiser Ganesha has gone silent. Excuse me? Hey, Garuda, what the hell's going on? I don't know, but it's definitely an enemy attack. I shall use all known sensor records to conduct an analysis. Records show that this was not an attack by the enemy fleet. There was a sudden, dramatic increase in thermal intensity within a specific concentrated area. See how the heat is distributed in a conal shape? If you extend the central axis, it leads to... Huh? The sun? The wavelength of the light emitted at the time of the reading matches that of our solar system sunlight. It's some sort of optical weapon. This is the data we acquired on the enemy's optical weapon via long-range scan. The weapon has been placed within close range of the sun, consisting of a main body as well as eight surrounding slave units. This device works by generating a gravitational lens that concentrates sunlight on targets. If we don't stop this weapon immediately, our forces will, without question, suffer severe casualties. Hawk Featherwing? Please dock with your support craft and head out immediately to suppress the threat. Eagle Featherwing and Falcon Featherwing will join you once they've restocked. Best of luck. Another ship just went down. Don't waste time. Roger that. Everyone ready? Let's roll. Initiating jump. There was a third blast just now. It is clear they intend to pick off each UNSF ship in turn. Damn it, this is a massacre. The graviton lens cannon activates at approximately two minute intervals. If we can destroy six of the slave units, we may be able to cease this operation. There should also be a gravitational recoil each time it fires. Be careful! All right, I'll hit the main apparatus. You guys destroy those slave units. Okay. As with the enemy carrier, this apparatus possesses strong armor plating. However, there are some noticeably weaker areas. Ignore the central unit. The shots will bounce right off. Up with you now. 
I shall forward all data analyzed by us so far. So only the slave units are destructible. Delightful. I could really use your help there. I could really ha use somebody not constantly pummeling me with fire. Okay. Wow. I kind of didn't out, have control. Put together, everyone, hold tight. That was sloppy. This is the data we acquired on the enemy's optical weapon via long-range scan. Okay. Repeat. Okay, mission start. That was my first death so far. This one's this one's a little tougher. Damn it, another ship just went down. Don't waste time. Roger that. Everyone ready? Let's roll. Initiating jump. There was a third blast just now. It is clear they intend to pick off each UNSF ship in turn. Damn it, this is a massacre! The graviton lens cannon activates at approximately two minute intervals. If we can destroy six of the slave units, we may be able to cease its operation. Okay. There should also be a six. gravitational recoil each time it fires. Be careful! Hmm. All right, I'll hit the main apparatus. You guys destroy those slave units. As with the enemy carrier, this apparatus possesses strong armor plating. However, there are some noticeably weaker areas. Ignore the central unit. The shots will bounce right off. Unpause. And then... Sorry we're late. Linking up with you now. I shall forward all data analyzed by us so far. So only the slave units are destructible. Delightful. You could really use your help there. Yeah, I'm coming.
The Graviton lens cannon is activating. Watch out, Robbie! Keep it together. Everyone, hold tight. Six of the slave units are destroyed. The enemy is no longer able to generate a gravitational field. There's a fleet of enemy fighter jets in this way, Robbie. Can I scan it? Pretty please? You are unarmed. It would be dangerous. The thing's already here. It's not like it's gonna do anything. Come on, can I? I guess we might learn something off it. Sure, I'll allow it. But make sure you back off at the first sign of trouble, Maria. You got that? Listen up. I'm Bertie's commanding officer. Your precious Robbie superior. So, I get a say. Technically, that is valid. Technically, technically. See what I deal with here? Six objects have detached from the main apparatus. Their form factor bears a strong resemblance to the slave units, suggesting these are spares. Oh, don't say that! Furthermore, judging from the angle of the main apparatus, the next target is most likely Garuda. What? How long until the next discharge? Recalculating based on the number of slave units, I estimate approximately 2 minutes 25 seconds. Oh god, this, this is seriously not good! I have an addendum. The main apparatus is weaker in places where the slave units were adjoined. So if we focus our attack on those... You are most likely to breach the armor. Hell yeah! Virgil, Peel, you handle the slave units. We'll attack the main rig.
Good lord. They're really coming down on me. Okay. Come on. 21% shield. I don't want to have to do this over again. Shield low energy. Come on, four percent. Give me something to work with. Come on. Come on. I'm hitting it. I'm hitting it. I'm hitting it as hard as I can. Okay. Again. This is the data we acquired on the enemy's optical weapon via long-range scan. The weapon has been placed within close range of the sun, consisting of a main body as well as eight surrounding slave units. This device works by generating a gravitational lens that concentrates sunlight on targets. All right. gravitational lens damn it another ship just went down don't waste time roger that everyone ready this one Let's has roll. me stumped initiating jump there was a third blast just now it is clear they intend to pick off each UNSF ship in turn Damn it, this is a massacre! The Graviton Lens Cannon activates at approximately two minute intervals. If we can destroy six of the slave units, we may be able to cease its operation. There should also be a gravitational recoil each time it fires. Be careful! Alright, I'll hit the main apparatus. You guys destroy those slave units. As with the enemy carrier, this apparatus possesses strong armor plating. However, there are some noticeably weaker areas. Ignore the central unit. The shots will bounce right off. Slave units are destructive. Delightful. You really use your help there. Out. Hold what tight. do you mean, watch out, though? Like, what am I supposed to do?
Let's see, did I get it? Oh, I guess I got that one. Shields up. I should be okay. My shield destroyed again. Okay. Slave units are destroyed. The enemy is no longer able to generate a gravitational field. There's a fleet of enemy fighters drifting this way, Robbie. Can I scan it? Pretty please. You are unarmed. It would be dangerous. The thing's already here. It's not like it's gonna do anything. Come on, can I? Guess we might learn something off it. Sure, I'll allow it. But make sure you back off at the first sign of trouble, Maria. You got that? Listen up. I'm Birdie's commanding officer. Your precious Robbie's superior. So, I gotta say. Okay. Now I have to last. My shields have to last. See what I deal with here? Emergency. Six objects have detached from the main apparatus. Their form factor bears a strong resemblance to the slave units, suggesting these are spares. Oh, don't say that. Furthermore, Judging from the angle of the main apparatus, the next target is most likely Garuda. What? How long until the next discharge? Recalculating based on the number of slave units, I estimate approximately 2 minutes 25 seconds. Oh god, this, this is seriously not good! Yeah, I have no. an addendum. The main apparatus is weaker in places where the slave units were adjoined. So if we focus our attack on those... You are most likely to breach the armor. Hell yeah! Virgil, Peel, you handle the slave units. We'll attack the main ring. Okay, let's give this a shot again. We basically just have to come in and fire and then uh, turn around and run back. So this is where I may have done the wrong thing by uh, choosing this craft because it doesn't have the firepower that the red craft has. What the? Okay, that I was not... I can't really account for the times that dudes just like run right into me. I turn around and they run right into me. Come on, do this. I feel like I'm doing some damage.
But then that, that time it didn't seem like it did anything. God, what? Oh, the hell. I don't know. <laughs> it's getting late. It's getting late. I kind of got to call it. This is the data we acquired on the think. enemy's optical weapon via long range scan. I gotta probably try one more time. The weapon but has been placed within close range of the sun, crazy. consisting of a main body as well as. And I know I'm not even at the end. There's like a... Damn it, another ship just went down. Don't waste time. Roger that. Everyone ready? Let's roll. Initiating jump. There was a third blast Maybe just I need now. To be using my it is shields. clear they intend to pick off each UNSF ship in turn. Damn it, this is a massacre. The Graviton Lens Cannon activates at approximately two minute intervals. If we can destroy six of the slave units, we may be able to cease this operation. There should also be a gravitational recoil each time it fires. Be careful! Alright, I'll hit the main apparatus. You guys destroy those slave units. As with the enemy carrier, this apparatus possesses strong armor plating. However, there are some noticeably weaker areas. Ignore the central unit. The shots will bounce right off. up with you now. I shall forward all data analyzed by us so far. So only the slave units are destructible. Delightful. You really use your help there. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. My hand hurts and I'm not feeling super positive about whatever effort I'm putting into this. The Graviton Lens Cannon is activating! Watch out, Robbie! Put together! Everyone, hold tight! I'm doing too good. And I still need to take out a bunch more. Come on.
six of the slave units are destroyed. The enemy is no longer able to generate a gravitational field. There's a field enemy fighter jet in this way, Robbie. Can I scan it? Please. You are unarmed. It would be dangerous. The thing's already here. It's not like it's gonna do anything. Come on, can I? Guess we might learn something off it. Sure, I'll allow it. But make sure you back off at the first sign of trouble, Maria. You got that? Oh, thanks for your permission, Captain. What is he? Listen up. I'm Birdie's commanding officer. Your precious Robbie Superior. So, I get a say. Technically, that is valid. Technically, technically. See what I deal with here? Emergency. Six objects right. have detached Third from the time the charm, hopefully. Their form factor bears a strong resemblance to the slave units, suggesting these are spares. Oh, uh, don't say that! Furthermore, judging from the angle of the main apparatus, the next target is most likely Garuda. What? How long until the next discharge? Recalculating based on the number of slave units, I estimate approximately 2 minutes 25 seconds. Oh god, this, this is seriously not good! I have an addendum. The main apparatus is weaker in places where the slave units were adjoined. So if we focus our attack on those... You're most likely to breach the armor. Hell yeah! Virgil, Phil, you handle the slave units. We'll attack the main ring. Yeah, I keep taking shield damage. I need to kind of, uh... I think I get it. I think I understand what I'm doing wrong. I gotta get those areas. Oh, darn it. Okay. I got it now. Yeah, I think I understand what I was doing wrong before. I was just like hitting it in places where it had already been hit. So it wasn't like... It it wasn't doing anything. Oh, okay. I guess it would have helped to... Internal temperature of the gravitational oh, lens cannon on. is rising. Structure may collapse. Why All the units, hell did I have to pull do back that? and make it quick. Okay. Hey. I feel so stupid now. I was just not looking at the radar that said, you know, oh, there's another red piece on there. I was just, like, firing away at it. That's silly. I almost want to edit that out. <laughs> oh, no. We're not going to make it. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, so. Dang, I can't believe that it was something that simple, you know? Garuda to all Featherwing units. The enemy has moved to consolidate its entire force on the far side of the sun. Looks like they're preparing another retreat. Oh hell yeah! We've got the upper hand. Now let's chase them down and seal the deal once and for all. I wish we could, but we've sustained heavy damage on our side from their Graviton lens cannon. Though it pains me to give the order, we must also retreat. Return to base right away. How could this happen? Our one chance to nail down the coffin and we don't have a hammer? They'll be back. And stronger than ever. Well, uh... Maybe they'll just forget. <sighs> Guess we'll just kill some time then. Maria, we are requested back at base. Please return. Oh, I was this close to breaching the mainframe! Maria, sweetie, we're gonna leave you here! 
Hold on, wait up. Oh, I guess I got like one of the bad endings. <laughs> Boo hoo. <laughs> I, I don't know if it's because I got caught up on probably. Yeah, because I got caught up on that like so many times. Absolutely phenomenal job by everyone involved. I mean, uh, Greg Lacquerware uh, and Danthrax, and you had uh, you had Shadow Mask on sound, and you had like several voice actors. Um, I don't have all their names right now, but. Uh, Definitely Let's see if I can look up the the readme. Our mission is not over yet. To retrieve the to retrieve the true peacefulness, you must conquer mission stage three, nine, and fifteen. Three, nine, and fifteen. Hmm. Something about those missions that I didn't conquer. Trying to find that list of names of who. Uh, ah, okay, so we had uh, Dan Bosley, Crouching Mouse, Mike Dent, Rocco DeFeo, Renee Martin, Rowan Dinked, and. Uh, everybody did a fantastic job. Um, I don't know the the whole game is so much more, so much more enjoyable. Uh, just because of the work that you guys did. So, yeah, no, I mean, I'm kind of bummed that I didn't get a good ending, but uh, I'll definitely play it again because um, it's a blast. And now at least I know which levels that I need to focus on to get a better ending. So, 
definitely um check out the check out the patch um it's an ssp file so you can use sega saturn patcher to go ahead and patch your copy of the game and um it will have been released and i'll go ahead and add a link to the article and the sega extreme uh page as well so you guys have access to that but definitely shouts to the entire team you guys did an amazing job and uh it's late it's, yeah so it's past midnight and i need to turn in to go to bed but i did better this time than i did before <laughs> frankly so this is still good at least i got to some kind of end ending um but yeah next time i'm definitely gonna try to brush up on those other levels and see what i missed uh, until next time, this is Saturn Dave reminding you that you must play your Sega Saturn. And uh, and shouts again to the Stellar Salt uh, localization team. You guys are awesome. And peace. See you later.